title of my message this morning is Deliver Us From Evil. Please join me in the call to worship. Crowds gathered to hear Jesus speak of pain. Crowds gathered to hear Jesus speak of joy. We gather to hear Jesus speak words of truth, words of power, and words of love. Speak now, Lord. Please stand and sing if you are able our opening hymn. This is my song. Acknowledge there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of God. We acknowledge we belong to the kingdom of God. We acknowledge that we long for that day when there is great peace throughout all the lands. We know the one who can bring that peace is only Jesus. So Lord Jesus, come, be present in this service of worship. Lord Jesus, come to our land. Lord Jesus, come to the hearts of all who hear this message today, that in their hearts they will know there is true peace in Jesus the Christ, the Prince of Peace. And we pray it all in His name. Join me in continuing in prayer. 
Let us confess our sins together. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Forgive our transgressions. Deepen our hearts. Remove fear and restore faith. The old ways of the flesh try to control us. Awaken the new ways of the Spirit within us. Make your dwelling place deep in our hearts and teach us wisdom so the hearts you transform may rejoice. Amen. David will say in Psalm 34, I sought the Lord. He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to Him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. Now I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And the good news of the gospel is that if we confess our sins and truly do repent, in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. to the world's problems dwells within you Jesus the Christ he is the Prince of Peace and so you can bring peace to the world through your life let us share the peace of Christ with one another
So by popular request, popular demand, we are going to have a children's message this time. Mariah and Mika, if you come forward, Mr. Harriman has a message for you, but for all of us. Hey, come on up. Hey, that's good fight. Sit right there. You bet. Wait. Okay. Well, good morning. How you guys doing? Good, good. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Good to see you both. Yes, you were, but your sister won, correct? Yep, yep, I remember. Do you guys ever take a bath or a shower? I'm getting kind of personal, do you? Which do you like best, baths or shower? You know what, so do I. I, I take baths and showers. Fact is, I used to be a bath guy, but that lady over there told me I ought to be a shower guy. Yeah, so I did like most men do, I switched. And you know what, I haven't regretted it much. But when I used to take a bath, I used to use something called soap. And even I still use that when I shower. Do you use soap? Do you know what soap has in it? Lye. Clear back in colonial times, lye. Lye is an acid. I want you to think about that for a minute. You put on your body acid. If it's in the right amount, it works good and it cleans you. If it isn't, it does what? causes all kind of problems. It burns. Okay. Well, here's the one. What's this? It's dial. Yeah. Did you use dial? Don't you wish everybody did? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Here we go. Here, here's another one. Lava. Lava. Uh-huh. That's a men's soap, right? It's got all that sand and grit. If it's it's got to be taking care of that dirt. And if nothing else, it'll take some skin dermis, you know? It'll, okay. All right, all right. Oh, don't don't forget here here he is, Margaret. I got one for you. Irish Spring. <laughs> Irish Spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here's one that's really my favorite. Ivory. You know why I like ivory? Well, when I, yes, when I was in that bathtub, you know, I, I, I don't want any surprises when I'm in that tub. <laughs> it's the one that floats. It's the only one that floats. Why does ivory the only one that floats? It's the one that was a mistake. P and G put too much oxygen in it. And lo and behold, it floats. Now they have a patent and are the only soap that floats. You learned something today. Yeah, take it with you. <laughs> All right. Anyways, back here. Okay. Soaps. You know, there's so many. You think that that would be interesting, and it is. But now we got soap is like this kind of soap. They, they got a soap for everything anymore, you know? And you get confused almost. But remember, all of them do one thing in common. They clean your outside. Exactly, Mariah. They clean your outside, you know? And that's a good thing. But you know what's going to happen with your outside again? It's going to get dirty, isn't it? And you're going to need to clean it again. But what about, what's that powerful thing that can clean you inside? That can clean your soul? Only one, one type. That's right. And that's who, Mariah? Jesus. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Mika. Yes. Either one of you. Either one of us answer. Okay. So Jesus can clean you from inside. Agreed? And how many times do you have to be cleaned? Only once. Only once. When he cleans you, you're forever clean. How? Inside. And you can't have too much, Jesus. In fact, when you get filled up, you just give it away and it refills itself. What a praise, huh? Well, it's been great to have you. And keep on doing one more thing. Keep on bathing. But remember, the real bath comes from inside, and that happens when you meet the Lord. Let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you know, it's a wonderful joy to have these young people with us today and, and to share with them about your message. As they go forth, protect them, look after them, but also give them Christian love that they may share it with a world so desperately in need. Amen and amen. Thanks. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, just go back.
That's a tough act to follow. I don't know what to tell you. I don't sing and I don't dance, so <coughs> we're going to... Uh, first of all, I've been admonished to remind you that uh, coming up in October is Kirkin of the, of the Tartan. Uh, it's on October 9th. We have these posters, and you can get some from Anita, I guess, and post them around town. Uh, in your favorite grocery store, market, telephone poles, <laughs> whatever. But that that's coming up, and, and, and uh, since I'm a McDougal, I got to take part in this. So, all right, okay. <clears throat> Some other announcements. Uh, following the service today, join us in the Williamsburg Room uh, hospitality hour, and Anita Harriman is the hostess today. On Tuesday, September 13th at 12 noon, you can come to the Cracker Barrel restaurant. Uh, reservations aren't necessary. And lunch will be provided at no cost. Who said there's no such thing as a free lunch? I think it was uh, some financier way back when. Uh, please plan to attend. Uh, Tuesday at 6.30, the Board of Deacons will meet. Wednesday at noon in the chapel is prayer meeting. Also Wednesday is Bible study in room 219. That's at 3 o'clock. Um, uh, please check your bulletin for any other upcoming events. Uh, any announcements from the congregation? Well, hearing none, we will move on. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, be with us in these uncertain times when we seem to have evil and wickedness on all sides. Help us to trust in you and let your word give us comfort. Also, we want to remember today those who died on a certain tragic and horrific September 11th. In Jesus' name, amen. The scriptures today are all from Proverbs. And they're scattered all over the place. And uh, this is one of my favorite uh, uh, books of the Bible because it's got all those things how to live by in it. So this is uh, Proverbs 2, uh, verse 11 through 16. Prudence will watch over you and understanding will guard you. It will save you from the way of evil and from those who speak perversely, who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, those whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. You will be saved from the loose woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words. Proverbs 8 verse 13. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance, and the way of evil, and the perverted speech I hate. Proverbs 11, 18 through 19. The wicked earn no real gain, but those who sow righteousness get a true reward. Whoever is steadfast in righteousness will live, but whoever pursues, pursues evil will die. Proverbs 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Proverbs 20, verse 22. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord. He will help you. Proverbs 24, 19 through 20. Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not envy the wicked. For the evil have no future. The lamp of the wicked will go out. The word of the Lord. Let us 
much Anthony thank you very much Troy thank you very much that was just very appropriate and uh, I do remember reading I Irving Berlin wrote that and shoved it in a drawer somewhere do I have that right and it wasn't really meant to be a big hit and somehow he just it got back out and caught on and I guess he didn't like it Oh no, you could talk to Troy or Anthony or John, they'll tell you a little more about it, I hope. <laughs> um, so we're going to go into New Testament now, and the scripture readings are before you. And let us hear the word of God. From Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 to 13. We know it as the Lord's Prayer. When you are praying, do not heap empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we've forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Now, we're more familiar with the King James Version, deliver us from evil. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the message. Now, Jesus will pray in the 17th chapter of Gospel of John. It's called the High Priestly Prayer. John 17, verses 13 to 16. But now I'm coming to you and I speak these things in the world 
so that you may have joy in and of themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. For they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Now the Apostle Paul will mention evil. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1-3 to Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified everywhere, just as it was among you, and that we may be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you, guard you, and keep you from the evil one. The word of the Lord. So where were you 21 years ago approximately at this time? I know exactly where I was. I was teaching a class at a local college. At that time I was doing half-time pastoring and half-time teaching. And I'll never forget, I had just finished the class and I looked over and I saw uh, one of our members of the class just suddenly burst into tears. So I inquired, why are you quiet crying? What's happening? And then she told me that something happened in New York City and great tragedy was upon the land. And then shortly after that there was folks that were coming up and down the hallways at the college and saying about a, na a nation's under attack. Something terrible's happened in New York City. And there was like a holy hush that went all over the college. And it's kind of a strange, eerie feeling. Parking lots emptied. Nothing was going on. Uh, and of course, I proceeded then to head for home after that. Horror upon horrors, I learned from uh, my sister that my nephew was actually in building number two and believe it or not a cigarette saved his life because he was not a smoker but he was with some folks that were smokers and they went to have a cigarette break and they were down on ground level when building came down and he miraculously got out of the situation so my sister and my family could have been among the mourners, but by a miracle of God, uh, my nephew Michael survived this terrible tragedy in New York City, September the 11th, 2001. I was pastoring a church part-time, half-time, as an interim, and immediately I said, no matter what I'm going to preach on, I've got to change my topic. I've got to speak to this. And God said, it's right in the Lord's Prayer. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. You pray it all the time in the Lord's Prayer. So in this message, first I want to affirm that evil exists. Secondly, that God sent a deliverer to deliver us from evil. Thirdly, I want to affirm how we can be delivered from the evil and the evil one. And fourthly, I want to give you some practical things that we can all do. First of all, let me acknowledge that evil is an ever-present reality in our modern world. And the scripture readings from Proverbs all focused on the fact that the writer of Proverbs was telling people over and over again, yes, evil is a reality. Now, you might say, gee, it's not necessary to say that, possibly. But there are some that actually teach that evil doesn't exist. And that would be Christian science, Mary Baker Eddy. 
It's all an illusion. It's all in your head. There's no evil. The cults and occult teach that in a way evil's good. Because you need evil to counterbalance good. Now that's a false teaching and a lie from hell. It's not true. Evil is not needed to balance good. That's why you pray, deliver us from evil. So I'm trying to get these things out of the way so that you realize that yes, the Bible affirms evil is a reality. And we get caught in it whether we want to be caught in it or not. The Bible affirms it exists and that you have a struggle with it and I do too. Anyone, whether he or she is a believer or not a believer, there's still a struggle with evil in this world. Now the three major sources of evil are this. First of all, the evil one. And if you noticed in the translation that was read to you from Lord's Prayer, deliver us from the evil one. That is a valid translation of the Greek original. It could be translated that way as a noun, not as an adjective. Could be. But most of us are familiar more so with deliver us from evil in general. But deliver us from the evil one. Now that's the title of the devil. He's called the evil one. So he's a source. Secondly, there are evil people. The Bible affirms that in all those writings of book Proverbs we see the existence that evil has befallen people. And they can be classified as evil or wicked. And the writers of the Psalms talk over and over again about the wicked. And lastly, evil can be right here. Right here in my heart. In your heart. Because we are told the heart is basically corrupt and evil. So even within ourselves, there's a potential for evil. That evil isn't always necessarily out there. It can actually be right here within any of us because our hearts, our flesh has been corrupt. So the problem of evil is real, as real can be. But the good news of gospel is this, that God sent a deliverer who delivers us from all these sources of evil, whether it be uh, the evil one, whether it be evil people, or whether it be the evil within our heart. That God has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, as it says in Holy Scripture, Romans 11, 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away all ungodliness from Jacob. In other words, that Je that's Jesus. Jesus came out of Zion, the dwelling place of God, and God sent him to this earth so that he would deliver us from the evil one, from sin itself, and from death, and the great power of evil itself, that we can be delivered from evil because the Zion, Zion sent the deliverer. That's a quotation from Isaiah 59, 20, 21. So what does it mean to be delivered? What does it mean? Well, it means that you're in a situation that you can't rescue yourself. You can't get out of it yourself. And there's only one way out, the deliverer. So when I was in the mountains of Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, a little town called Glasgow, Virginia. It really doesn't have a whole lot of significance, but at one time it produced a lot of the carpet in America and 
maybe some of the carpet you've stepped on came from the factory that's there in Glasgow, Virginia. But what it is, it's a small town in a valley and huge mountain on this side, huge mountain on that side, all around mountains. And if the rain comes enough, it saturates the soil so that eventually the rain, rather than going into the soil, comes down off those mountains like the rain comes off of your roof at your house. And the town is the recipient of the water. And most of the folks that are in that congregation experienced major flood at least three times in their life that caused terrible loss of property and even loss of life. So on this one flood, uh, the husband of the choir director, Dave, for the church I was serving, was to be the last one out. He was trying to help, you know, evacuate and everything. And he was going to go out by helicopter. But uh, he got a call on his phone and the guy says, Oh, my dog, my dog, my dog. Oh, my goodness, he says, I forgot about my dog. He says, he's in a cage. And he says, would you, would you go to the, open the cage and get him out? And Dave said, I'll do my best. So the water was rising. And Dave said he went to the cage and that water was up next to the cage like this. And just about ready to overwhelm the dog in the cage. And he said he, he got to the cage and opened it up. And the dog came out and swam a little bit. And it went up the mountaintop. And he says, they didn't see that dog for three weeks. <laughs> but Dave rescued the dog. The dog couldn't get out, you see. And the waters were rising. Now that's, that's deliverance. That's what Christ did for us. He delivered us from situations that we can't get out of, like the power of the devil, the power of sin, the power of death. So there's a deliverance right there uh, in that little story, and it's Jesus Christ who did the same for me and for you. He delivered us from the things that were going to overwhelm us, namely the devil, sin, and death itself. So we have a deliverer, we have a rescuer, secondly, and then thirdly, we need to cooperate with the rescue mission, with the rescuer. Um, what do you do? How do you, how do you cooperate with the one who wants to rescue you and that is uh, you let him take all the condemnation of sin in other words even though we sin Christ took the condemnation and then that delivers you from the power of sin because he took it and bore the penalty on the cross you let him take care of the falsehoods that are presented in life. Many false teachers will appear. Many false, uh, go a false gospel will appear. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, Jesus died. He was the first Adam. Because the first Adam brought death, but Jesus is the second Adam, so He brought life. So you acknowledge that He's the one that bore the penalty of sin. He's the one that took the devil on in a battle and won over him. And he's the one that gives you the deliverance. In other words, you don't really do it yourself. If you think you can do it yourself, that's incorrect. But if you allow Jesus Christ to be the one to do it in your behalf, you'll have a tremendous sense of victory and a tremendous sense of boldness and you won't fear in this life because you know it's Christ is the one who wanted for you. Christ is the one who lives in you. And as Scripture says, greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. So you're not going to lose. You're a winner because Christ has won it for you. Christ has delivered you. And you can be set free from all these powers that want to overwhelm you, like the power of sin, like the power of the devil, like the power of the world. Is anybody with me? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now Jesus knew how to overcome the evil one in the wilderness. He just simply spoke the Word of God. Now that's why it's so important to know the Word of God. Because the Word of God is the means through which you'll discover the ability to be delivered from all that which seeks to overwhelm you, which seeks to, to, to want to take your life, which want to take your peace, want to take your joy. Okay? So when you know the Scriptures, the Scriptures and the power of the Scriptures can take care of this in your behalf. So you need to cooperate as I need to cooperate with the Deliverer in what He's done and what He's doing in your life. So what are some things that you can do, lastly? Practical things. Well, one thing we know that happened which, which, which ended up inevitable consequence was pursuit of enemies by military and war. Now, that's a, it's a consequence of what happened. All right? But there's other things that can be done in our own personal lives other than saying we're going we're gonna to send troops. We're going to send troops. What can we do here in our lives when there's evil? Maybe, at times, it's withholding the sword. Maybe. For example, when Peter was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he struck the, the high priest with the sword, cut off the ear of the high priest. And in a way, we might say, that was commendable. But for Jesus, it wasn't commendable. And he said, you know, put your sword away. Put your sword away. In other words, this wasn't a situation of war. This wasn't a time to go to war. So put your sword away, Peter, because if you live by the sword, you may die by the sword. So responding to evil all the time with, with incredible force may not be the answer in that situation. Now, I'm not condemning the fact that there have been wars. I'm not condemning any of the... Uh, inevitability of wars that the United States has been through. What I'm just saying is that maybe sometimes and rather me pulling a sword or you pulling a sword, God is saying, no, put the sword back in the sheath. Because it's not the way I want it. It's not what I want right now. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. In other words, why is it that we, when we're hurt, we feel somehow we have to get revenge? You see, God says, don't worry about all that. Vengeance is mine. If, if you really want it, just entrust it to me. And then you might say, gee, I don't really want vengeance on any enemies. I don't really want that. Jesus said, if you're struck with a cheek and, and, so, and, and someone's wanting to physically strike you, He says, well, just turn the other cheek. You might shock the daylights out of them. If you say, well, go ahead, strike me again. They might say, what's the matter with you? I'm not going to fight with you because, <laughs> because I just struck you in the cheek and you don't fight back. So they might just call the whole fight off. So... There are other things that can be done. The Bible says, pray for your enemy. Pray for your enemy. Is that something that, that, that we ever consider? Like, if, if something goes wrong and you've experienced some evil, say a prayer for that person. And it, it's not an easy thing to do. But you know who prayed for enemies? On the cross was Jesus. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They're crucifying Him. 
So there's a prayer that needs to go out maybe. Uh, and then it tells us to do good. To do good? For your enemy? <laughs> Come on, preacher. <laughs> Preach something else. Well, that's the Word. The Word of God tells you. If you've been wronged, if there's been a neighbor that's done something to you and you're thinking, gee, I just... Hey, maybe I can... Maybe I can take that neighbor a pie I just baked or something like that, you know, and you'll really throw them off because they'll be thinking, gee, they're coming to my door to wring my neck. No, I'm just at your door because I want to give you this pie that I baked or I want to give you a coupon to go to Cupid's. <laughs> And then they won't know what to do with you. Except maybe say, you know what, maybe it's time. Then my heart gets right. If your heart's right. So, the Bible says, deliver us from evil. God has the power. God has the ability. That when you encounter it, He can keep you safe. When you encounter it, He can overwhelm it. When you encounter it, by His grace and by His love, it can be turned in another direction so that it doesn't have to end up in a terrible, terrible explosion of hatred and vengeance. Deliver us from evil. I'll never forget that overwhelming feeling I had 21 years ago. Maybe you had it too. And that was the message I gave to that congregation. And it's a message that still applies today. God needs to deliver us from any evil that we see or encounter in this life. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, evil is real. And we acknowledge, O oh Lord, sometimes we truly need to be protected from it by the power of force. But there are other times when it's a little different and we can be delivered from it in other ways other than force. So teach us, Lord, how to use these weapons of prayer, of goodness, of positive words out to others, that in Jesus' holy name we can discover peace in the world, peace in our lives, peace in our nation. We ask it all in the name of the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lead on, O King Eternal.
At this time, we are privileged to come before God with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Acknowledge, O oh God, that through you deliverance has come by the means of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for this wonderful deliverance. These are our tithes and offerings and gifts in thanksgiving. But we render our very lives in thanksgiving for what you have done for us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Receive the gifts and the givers in his name. Amen. You may be seated. We'd like to say welcome to Lorenzo Tan, who's with us this morning as a first time visitor and guest. And we'd like to welcome you here. Do we have any other joys and concerns for our prayer time? Yes, Jimmy. Well, Anita and I celebrated 53 years of wedding anniversary. And I just want to share with you, I know all of you are saying the same thing. How in the world, how in the world did that young man back then land Anita? 
Well, I'll tell you, God's still in the miracle business. <laughs> 53 years ago, he said on her heart to say, I do, and I've been blessed ever since. God still is in the miracle business. And every time you look on that dear saint of mine, my wife Anita, just think, what a miracle. What a miracle. Keep in our prayers Dr. Ron Bell. As you see, his residency is now the Greens, Building A, Room 408. And Ron wanted me to convey to everyone his thanksgiving and his warm appreciation for your love and support during this time of great tragedy in his life. So he personally wanted me to do that, so I want to convey it to you that he shares his love with you and thanks for your concern, your prayers, your cards, your visits, your support. Do you have any others? Let's go to God in prayer. To God, we are grateful for moments of joy in our lives, acknowledging the blessedness and gift of marriage and faithfulness in marriage. We acknowledge the joy of visitors and friends and family. We acknowledge the joy of freedom in our land, that we all had a wonderful sense of that as we sang, God bless America. We're grateful for our land. We're grateful for what you've bestowed upon us, acknowledging that we have what we have because you've been good to us. Your goodness has truly been shown in our lives and shown in our land and shown in this church. The goodness of God upon Market Street Presbyterian Church. So we give you thanks for all these good things that we know of. Good memories and good people and good events in our lives. We pray for those who are in need. Holding before you especially Dr. Ron Bell, praying for him to provide that grace and help in time of need. There are others who stand in need, and we ask through the name of Jesus Christ that you bring about healing and hope in their life. We acknowledge that in our land there was great sorrow on this day 21 years ago, and the sorrows seem to continue over many years because of our losses and because of the great emotion of lives completely gone because of this tragedy. We pray for the healing of those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the healing of our nation. We pray for the healing of those who have experienced this trauma and tragedy. For no words can be too adequate to describe anything that happened to individuals who were there or nearby. But we do ask for the healing power of Jesus Christ to be upon lives and our land. For He is our deliverer. He is our Savior. And we fully acknowledge that in this prayer. We pray it all in His name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Um, we close our service very appropriately with a wonderful hymn song, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. This concludes our service.